Hello and welcome back to Harry's Jetty Clinic. Today we're going to look at uh, programming the radio for elevons or picturons. If you're not sure what a picturon is, it's a type of model which it has a tailplane but has no elevator and the wings have no ailerons. Instead, the wings are free to actually pivot around their joiner tube and the servos drive the wings, they drive them both in the same direction for pitch control and drive them in opposite directions for roll control. As far as the transmitter software is concerned, Picheron and Elevons are exactly the same thing. So this covers both. And so what we'll do is look at the basic setup to get it going and then the all important job of getting the elevator travels on both sides to match exactly because if they don't, you'll actually induce a bit of roll. Okay, let's go in, menu, model, be a new model. I'll call it A just for brevity. On we go. You want to select a no flaps two aileron wing and the delta elevon. There you are, tail type. There is none. It's a delta elevon. Select that one. On we go. Um, now, there's your standard controls. I'm going to suggest that you add a rotary dial for helping get the elevators matched. You'll see what will come to this later on. So I'll call it T for just for trimming. And I'm going to assign P8, one of the rotary controls to it. Okay, to that, onto there. And because I'm just using it to trim the elevator. I'll do that, get rid of it. I don't need it to use up a, a channel. You'll notice, of course, because we said it has two ailerons, but no tail, there is no elevator in here um, because it's just counting the two surfaces on the wings as being ailerons. Okay, doke. Create and activate the model. Yes. Okay to that. Pair the receivers now. Yes. I shall plug the receiver power in. It would help if I plugged it the right way around, wouldn't it? Uh, yep. Say okay to that. I'm just going to pause here because a massive bumblebee has just gone past and his buzzing is going to interrupt the video, so I'll be back in a second. All right, on we go. Bumblebee has managed to disappear somewhere in the workshop and I can't find him, so if he reappears, I'll... A cheeky thing. Yeah, and I'm back. Bumblebee has been liberated from the workshop. He's off to find another flower. Okie doke. So we've got this going. And here's our two elevon servos. And if I move the elevator, you do that. And if I move the aileron, they do that. Okay, apparently, you know, we're all set to go. No, we need to adjust the travels and such like. So if we go into menu, into fine tuning, because we chose the Delta Elevon tail type, or no tail type with Delta Elevons, this menu option has appeared. It isn't there uh, if you don't select the Delta Elevon tail type. And we have a look in there, and we can see that for each servo, S1, which of course will be on the left wing, and S2, which will be the right wing, uh, we've got an elevator travel, we can do each one of them, and an aileron travel. Uh, there's several things to think of here. First of all, it's defaulted to giving you 50% of each. So, for instance, if I move just the elevator, watch this servo here, it moves there. If I move the aileron, it moves there. But if I move both together, it moves there, i.e. the 100% travel. If we turn these travels up or down, well, we say they still accumulate to make the total travel. Should the accumulation of their travel go past the 125% that is the default number in the servo setup limit parameter, then the servo would reach 125% and it would stop rotating any further in response to the stick. Um, the other thing to note here is we don't have separate up and down travel values. Uh, so if Servo 1, suppose you want it to travel 20 millimetres up and 20 millimetres down in response to the elevator. 
and it's going 19 up and 21 down, you can't individually adjust them. You could set the, the travel value here to be in the uh, middle of them. In other words, 19 up and 21 down. Or you could set it so that you've got uh, 20 up and 22 down. And then we'll adjust it elsewhere. You choose what to do. So anyway, you choose values here to get it as close as possible to what it should be. Next. Can we adjust these servos perfectly independently for both up and down? We well, can certainly do so in the ailerons. You come in here and you've got the independent up and down value for each aileron. So you can tune them exactly and precisely. But it won't affect the elevator. We're going to have to find some other way to do that. Furthermore, I'm going to suggest that you'd come in here last of all, because we're going to have to tune the elevators in the servo setup menu. And in servo setup will affect any signal that comes from any source into that servo. So if you set up your aileron differential beautifully, but then change something, a value in the servo setup menu, uh, you're going to have to come back here and do it again because it's going to have adjusted the effect from this. Okay, to that. Now, I said we're going to create a, a mixer. This is what we're going to do. Free mix, add from that T control I made for trimming it out. It's not trimming, it's, uh, well, it's just going to be uh, for trimming, for adjusting. And it's going to be to elevator and it's going to have a master value of 100% no switch needed on we go what's that going to do it's going to mean now if I turn p8 we get that 50% elevator travel t t not for trimming t for tuning that's what I chose t for now what can we do to tune the elevators uh, get perfect travel up and down matched. Well, we can't uh, use flight modes, can't use digital trim, can't use flight mode trim. Dual Rater Expo uh, won't really work because that's at a, a global level. It works across the function, not across the servos. So changing something there will change both servos. Same with the function curve. Aileron differential, as we've seen, it will affect on the aileron function, but it won't have any effect on the elevator function. We've seen the delta elevon mix. Uh, again, it gives you a sort of overall travel for each servo, but not independent each end up and down. Butterfly flaps won't help us. Free mixes won't help us. We are going to have to use servo setup. Come along to... Uh, aileron 1 and if it needs to be you can use tiny amounts of sub trim and here we've got no option but to use the max positive and max negatives to get the two elevator servos perfectly matched at full travel okie doke now this is where it's become a good reason for setting up that mixer on the rotary control because to set up uh, the full travel, you want to be able to pull full up elevator, for example, or full down elevator. You want to be looking at the, the meter that you've got on your surfaces, whether it's an electronic or a good old-fashioned sort of ruler-style meters to see whether they're going up and down. And you want to be adjusting the values. Uh, so if we've used a uh, tuning control, as I've put in, we can simply turn it to the maximum travel. So... Looky here, what I'm going to do now, instead of holding up elevator stick and then trying to adjust values with another hand and look at my meters and stuff, I'm simply going to use that tuning knob. There, I've turned the tuning knob to the end stop. It's going to be like holding full up elevator. And now, if I go into my menu here, uh, we're in aileron servo one, that's the left hand servo. Press the number and will it jump? No. There we go. So, as of moving the stick, moving the tuning control moves it 
to the relevant box. See that? Okay, doke. So now I can go ahead and adjust the end point for servo one until my travels exactly match what are required, either in matching servo two or if servo two is needing a little bit of adjusting, exactly match the travel that the instructions say. Okay, doke. And then by turning the tuning knob to the other end, I can now adjust the values for that and get it absolutely precise. Okie doke. So we'll come back here just for the sake of clarity. I'll set it all back to 100. And because we're doing this, uh, of course, if you'd done aileron differential before doing this, it would now slightly alter the effect of the aileron differential because you've adjusted uh, that servo's global response to things. So do anything in here first, get it all done before you go back to adjusting the aileron differential. Okie doke. So that's allowed you to tune both your servos to the exact endpoints that are needed. Let's turn my P8 control back to the middle for the moment. You can see in here I've got it back to 0%. I'm not moving the aileron or elevator stick, I'm moving that uh, P8 tuning knob. Put it back to zero, there we are. Now, uh, yep, you've got your endpoints perfectly set, but uh, with uh, Picheron or Elevons, it's important that the elevator function on both sides match travels precisely the whole way. Otherwise, you know, at partial elevator, you're going to get a bit of a roll in the mix. Um, we've set the endpoint so at full up or full down elevator we know we're not going to get any roll because they've been travel matched. But due to um, the inaccuracies of many brands of servos or there might be tiny differences in your linkages and, and that can accumulate up tiny differences in your linkage geometry, tiny differences in the servos, at partial travel they may not match. And so what are we going to do? Well, this is where we come to the servo balancer, this lovely beast here, and um, decide what to do. I have a tendency, uh, so that I keep consistency of thinking across all models, is that I regard the left-hand servo as the master one, which is becomes the reference, and the right-hand servo becomes the... Uh, one that I'll adjust. So I'm on the left-hand servo at the moment. I shall go to the right-hand servo and I'm going to adjust this one to match the travel of the left-hand servo. Now, uh, I have a video all about servo balancer, so go there and have a, a good look at that, but some of it's going to be covered in this one anyway. Servo balancer allows you to make very fine adjustments on this multi-point curve. Uh, and I say the reason I choose the left one as the master is it's better to have at least one of them as master, a reference point, that you're not trying to adjust two of them and you're chasing your tail. Just say one of them is the reference point. Uh, I won't adjust that in the servo balancer. I'll just adjust the other one in the servo balancer. And uh, as the same thing as setting up your endpoints, uh, we don't want to be trying to hold partial stick, because chances of you managing to hold partial stick beautifully accurately, etc., is next to nil. Uh, at the same time as you're trying to make adjustments and watch the meter system that you've got on your surfaces. So uh, to activate Servo Balancer, we have to press the programming dial to get into it. And you see the menu along the bottom has changed. If I press the dial to come out of it, see at the moment it's still in the servo setup. That would take us down a servo to aileron 1. That'll take us up a servo to aileron 2. But if I press the programming dial button, now the menu has changed. Auto, clear, uh, and this has become active. If I move the elevator stick, you can see that two things are happening. The gun sight, it's with the crosshairs, shows where the stick has got to, well, or the servo output, I should say, really has got to, because, of course, remember, 
the default settings were 50% each for elevator and aileron. I haven't changed it, but you'd have changed it to suit. So of course it's only moving to 50% at full stick. And if I move the aileron, again, it does the same thing. If I pull both together, it comes out to 100%. Okie doke. Also notice that as we're moving it, there's a circle around one of the points. Ah, it jumped there. You see the circle jumped and the point became black. The point is just a little open. It's a square, actually. But as the gun sight gets close to it, the circle jumps to that one and the point becomes black. That means that's the point that we're going to be adjusting if we turn the rotary dial. Now, here's your problem. See how it's jumping? That's because auto is switched on. So the point jumps. That's fine. Uh, except that if you want to adjust this midpoint here, uh, and you're not very good at holding the stick steady, you're going to be jumping points whilst you're adjusting things. Nevertheless, I want to show you something that happens in auto. So I'm going to hold the stick very steadily there, and I'm now going to turn the programming dial. See how it moves up? And it moves in 0.1 percentages of travel. Frankly, if you fitted servos that cost less than about £60 a time, they will not respond to 0.1% of a travel. Maybe even more expensive servos won't. Um, but look at the shape of the curve. It, it smooths it out. So it's going to affect other points as well. Let's take it back down to zero. Yeah. Now, uh, pressing the menu button, you should know, in other fields allows you to jump you know, from 1% per click of the dial to 10% per click of the dial to 100% per click of the dial. It works in this as well, although all it allows you is jumps from 0.1% to 1% to 0.1% to 1%. So using just the center point here, if I press the menu button, now each click of the dial moves at 1%. See that? Whereas if I press menu again, each click of the dial now only moves at 0.1%. Okie doke. So you can shortcut there. And as I say, frankly, if you have spent uh, money on budget servos, they will not respond to a 0.1% change. In fact, you'll be lucky if they respond to 1% change. Um, I have bought second-hand models, uh, which basically I rip the so-called good servos out, put them in the bin, and buy properly good but expensive servos. I'm afraid you get what you pay for. One second-hand model I bought um, had been fitted with a brand of servos, which, um, shall we say, shares a name with a pandemic that's currently shutting down the world. And in most cases, if you tried adjusting subtrim, they wouldn't even move until you got to 5% change, and then they jumped. Um, they uh, were in landfill by the end of the week. Uh, I did try then going up uh, a price point to the most popular brand of servo uh, in probably the world. Certainly the most popular brand of servo on the English speaking forums around the world. And they too were utter rubbish. It took two to three percent change before they would jump and they wouldn't. Um, center properly either. So if you think, oh, I can adjust things by 0.1%, yeah, you can adjust the output, but your servo is not going to move. Um, and I went up another price point to uh, a newish brand of servo to the UK, branded by one of the importers, which at least um, responded to a 1% change in trimming and uh, always came back to the same center. But Two identical servos, one would rotate 88 degrees and the other would rotate 93 degrees. So you're going to have to adjust endpoints. Unless you spend a lot of money on servos, I'm afraid you have any ideas you've got of making fine-tuning adjustments here are just nonsense. Okay, rant mode off. Um, yeah, we've seen how in auto it follows the point. Now, use our tuning dial... I'm not going to have to hold the stick. I can move it to the point there. It jumps to that. Lovely. Now, my hands are free. 
the uh, servos are fixed at that position. I'm not having to hold the stick and so I can make my adjustments. I've got two free hands to do this with, so I've got one hand to make adjustments. I can look over at my tuning dials with the other. That's fine. What happens if you don't want that curvy, uh, smoothed out adjustment? Switch off the auto. Now if I move the tuning dial, you can see it moves. The point to be adjusted doesn't go with it because switching off auto has made two changes. In order to change the point that will be adjusted by the programming dial, I press the programming dial and it will move one point to the right. Pressed again and again and again and again. And it goes round in a circle, gets the end point. When I press the button again, servo balancer is switched off. Press the button again, servo balancer will switch on and it will come back in at this far left point. And I can keep pressing the tuning button to get to the point I want. The other difference that makes when you switch off auto is that when I now adjust this point, instead of getting a smooth curve, we'll get just that point alone adjusted. If I was to switch on auto, it's jumped here to this one because it's near to the, program, the, um, the tuning dial. We go back to being a curve. So I'll bring that one to zero. Come back here to that point and take it down. Notice what's happened because auto switched on. We'll get that back to zero. I'll bring that one back. But you can see here how you can. Uh, yeah. Adjust. Okay. There we go. In this menu, by using the tuning dial that we created, we can easily move to the points required. You can move them as a smooth curve. You can move it as a sharp V shape. And thus you can get your elevator travels not only matched at the end point, but for the midpoints. And when you've finally done this, and you're happy that that's worked, now you can go back to your fine-tuning aileron differential and set up any slight differences you want in tuning the ailerons. Okey-doke, and that should give you perfectly working elevons or picherons.